Hi, my name is uh, Olajide Olagunlu, and I'm the author of uh, the book, How to um, Resolve a Conflict, uh, which is the book I'm sharing with you on the screen now, How to Resolve a Conflict. Uh, this book is a textbook for the lecture you just joined, and the lecture is also titled How to Resolve a Conflict. And this is how to resolve a conflict lecture 42. Welcome. I do hope uh, you can uh, please uh, subscribe to this channel, this lecture channel now before you continue. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, in, the, in lecture 41, we continued our, uh, continued looking at the person of the mediator. Um, and based on the fact that uh, the mediator is like the, 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 um, the turning point, the game uh, maker, um, the conduct of the mediator, the skill of the mediator, the ability of the mediator, the person of the mediator, the character of the mediator, uh, could determine whether the conflict resolution happens or not. Um, so that why it is true that the parties decide at uh, the end um, of the mediation decide whether they agree or not. Uh, the, the ability of the mediator to conduct himself, herself professionally and effectively and skillfully uh, could play a great role in determining whether that reconciliation, that resolution, that settlement happens. Um, so today we are going to continue uh, our discussion on the mediator. Um, so as you are probably aware, we reach and then we discuss. Um, now, let's read components, components of effective communication. Don't forget we said the last lecture that the key role of the mediator is effective communication to allow or to promote to effect the free flow of thoughts from one side, from one party to the other. So these are the components, at least some of them. Listening, listening. Now, we'll come to this, back to this later. Uh, uh, but for now, just know, uh, suffice to say that a good communicator is a good listener. Quote, swift to hear, slow to speak. Quick to hear, slow to speak. That's a quote from uh, the book uh, of James 119. Uh, very apt. The mediator is a good listener. That means uh, she or he is swift to hear, slow to speak. If you watch your conversation between the conversation between you and your friends or colleague, or conversation between two people, just watch. Do that exercise if you've not done it before. Watch. Um, the interplay between silence and speech. You would notice that um, when one person, between the two persons talking, keeps quiet, the other person is prompted to talk. That's why we say, uh, quick to hear, to hear slow to speak. It's almost, almost instinctive that if you give people your ears and close your mouth, they feel obliged to open their mouth and talk to you. That's important for a mediator because the resolution of the dispute, at least the understanding of the dispute itself, what is not happening that should be happening, which is causing the conflict, what needs are not being met, that's than the fact of not meeting them causing a the conflict. The only way the mediator can know is if she hears them, if he hears the parties. And you cannot hear the party if you're talking. 
if you are not slow to speak, if you are not deliberately quiet, keeping it quiet. And putting emphasis on your listening skills. Being ready and able to pick up the slightest communication, whether verbal or non-verbal. As I said, we'll come back to this in more detail later. The second one, understanding. I read, understanding. This flows from good listening. Understanding flows from good listening and generates respect and trust. When we say we understand someone, we're in effect saying we know the person's perspective and situation. We can reach him and vice versa. There is a rapport. Okay. So we say understanding, which is the second component, flows from good listening. In other words, if you get it right at the first level, listening, you get it at this next level, understanding. You cannot listen effectively and not understand adequately. You cannot listen effectively and not understand adequately. And I wrote here, understanding flows from good listening. And very importantly, the point I want to make, generate respect and trust. Respect and trust. Now, this is very critical in mediation. And in chapter 10, we're going to uh, we'll discuss chapter 10 of this book. We're going to dwell in more greater detail on this. Trust. When we say we understand someone, we are in effect saying we know the person's perspective. I know where the shoe pinches them. I feel them. Now, feeling them is not the same as agreeing with them. <laughs> I can understand you perfectly without, without, without agreeing with you. The beauty of the mediator is to understand you perfectly. It's not his duty or her duty to agree with you. Well, it doesn't mean you are wrong. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you are wrong or right, but it's not her business, it's not his business to agree with you. But once she agrees with you, he is no longer a mediator. He has become a judge and an arbitrator, deciding who is right, who is wrong. But she will understand you more than a, an arbitrator or a judge can. That is, that is input into mediation, greater understanding, necessarily. And again, if I may explain why, because he's not judging, she's not deciding for you. This only helping you to understand yourself and the other person. She's not there to be standing right or wrong. It's not there to make your choices for you. You are your own judge. You decide where you are. If you feel, if you want to decide the other part, that you are wrong, oh, why not? <laughs> I've been in a mediation. I mean, when I was just starting out in mediation 26 years ago, there about. <laughs> I made that mistake, you know. I was so sure. <laughs> I was so sure that the measurement, so what happened was that they, we had to go to measure the land in dispute. You see the word I just used, we had to go. I was wrong, we didn't have to go. The parties wanted to go to measure the land. It was not my business to go with them. I'm not a judge, I'm not an arbitrator. Whether I see, I see the land or not, it's not, it's not material to my work as a mediator. Young, fresh mediator, I thought that I should go with them. That was the beginning of my problem <laughs> and big embarrassment. Uh, so we got to the land. I decided measuring their measuring. What should I have done as a, as a mediator, as a good mediator? Just be looking. I shouldn't have gone there in the first place. Now I'm there. Okay, I should not. I should have just folded my hand and be looking. When they finish, okay, I'll see you in my office. We'll continue the, the mediation. 
you will not believe what I did. When I saw that the measurement was being, you know, view as a young but foolish midget, in my view, I felt that one party was not was playing with measuring. You will not believe what I did. I took the measuring line, the tape roll, and I started <laughs> doing measurements. What did I do there? I ended my ability to mediate for them. I could no longer, I was, I was no longer their mediator. That was the end. And I knew, I knew immediately that I put my foot, I had put my foot in my mouth, I left. I just left it, went home. So I had no business going to measure the line with them. I had no business, uh, even if I feel that the measurement was being done wrongly, I had no business interfering, even saying, I think there's a mistake here in the measurement. And I had absolutely, I had absolutely no business. Mediator, please <laughs> know that. I have, and you have no business helping. I had no business helping them to determine uh, measurement size, where one land, uh, one plot ends and the other one um, begins. No, that was not my business. Well, I forgive myself in a way. Um, well, the I have dealt with that is that one of the disputes you will be mediating at the end of this lecture is, is the, uh, it's about that, uh, that case that I did, we did there wrongly, <laughs> 26 or so years ago. Uh, well, let's continue. I, uh, it was a great learning uh, point for me. So we said that we are in effect saying we know the person's perspective and situation we can reach them. So I was talking about you know, understanding. That understanding doesn't mean that I agree with you or I decide for you or decide against you or I disagree with you. No. Understanding is more about empathy. On that, that is knowing the way you feel. It's very important. I will discuss this data, but just to quickly tell you that the opposite is sympathetic or sympathetic. And that's when agreement comes. And that's what the mediator doesn't do. It's not your business to sympathize, but it's your business to empathy. To empathy is not agreeing, empathy is feeling it the way they feel it so that you can understand what they are communicating. Whether they should be feeling that way is a different um, um, uh, it's a different thing altogether. But the mediator must know how to feel. That's the understanding. Um, and what the fact that I mentioned here that when we see the person's or the party's perspective and situation. Well, we can, uh, with, with meaning that we can reach him or her and vice versa. When I say that's a rapport, it does not, the rapport here does not mean agreement, but that, uh, I mean, for the, for the, for the mediator, uh, it just means that uh, you make them see that you know exactly what it is they feel and they are communicating what it is they are saying. I would like to stop here. Um, I, I would like you to think more about this. I think that um, the, the mediator needs to be sensitive where um, values are concerned. Because while there may be a tendency to say, to want to pass judgment, make valid judgment, immediately has to always remember 
that no matter how who this person is before him or her, no matter what the whole world is calling her or calling him, whatever, the mediator cannot make the same value judgment as a mediator. Or because you are a mediator. Does it mean those people calling them names, give, making value judgment about them, either negative value judgment or positive value judgment, does it mean those people are wrong or right? That's not your business immediately. It doesn't matter. Mediations and effective conflict don't happen because of, because of people's character or judgment or, or value judgment because of their, their, their character, their person, their, where they are coming from, their background, their pedigree. No, it happens because the mediator is able to help them bridge communication and begin to discuss how they can look at what issues are in conflict between them to see how they can move from those challenges, problems, and like I said, unmet need towards a, a new situation that provides for those gaps in their relationship, which cause the conflict. The character of the people themselves is immaterial. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I'm tempted to give an example. So let's say, uh, these two people in conflict, let's say two of them are notorious, publicly notorious for being, what would they call them? Uh, thieves. <laughs> so the two of them that are before you, you know, it is uh, the people, uh, the way the public perception of them is that they are thieves. You cannot carry that public perception in your head as a mediator when you are mediating between them. Why? Because you will be judging. As I believe I said in an earlier lecture, a mediator listens to a party as if her life or his life, that is mediator's life or life, depends on what the party is saying. Now, if you bring to that mediation, the perspective of like, this person talking to me, this party is stiff. <laughs> Would you listen to them uh, as if you're like the person? <laughs> I doubt, I don't think so. Yeah, maybe that's why I said the task of mediator is a challenge. You know. Uh, Oh, like I said, we'll stay. Let's, just, let's stop here yeah, for today. We'll continue the next, next, the next lecture, lecture 43. I believe lecture 43. Um, what's important uh, for now is to please uh, try and apply what you are learning in this lecture series to your life uh, and to your business work, you know, wherever you are found. As I, said, as I said in the last lecture, conflict is the biggest industry. So you are needed. The skills you have here, you are learning here are needed by the world. And you need to be very sensitive and conscious of that. Also, just remember to subscribe to this channel before you leave and uh, try and see if you could get a copy of the book, How to Resolve a Conflict. Um, it's available on all um, Amazon channels, Amazon um, outlets. Thank you. Thanks again. And I hope you had a nice time. Um, interacting with me today.